Hey, YouTube theologians, here's the second installment of the conversation I had with Bethany and Adam Dirks. Uh, we talk about the sanctuary there at St. Paul, how Lutheran architecture preaches. We talk about the liturgy as a redundancy system for the gospel. We talk about the pastor's role in the liturgy and the question of what is worship? Is it us serving God or God serving us? We talked about how the Lord is constantly pruning us in this life and how Jesus has established his church by his gifts of the absolution, preaching, baptism, and the Lord's Supper. We dig into how the Lord uses physical means. We talk about the danger of Gnosticism, separating spiritual truths from physical things and how this strengthens our faith, this objective reality. We talked about how Martin Luther carved I am baptized into the table. I think that happened. I'm, I can't confirm it. I think it happened. And the danger of the three ladders, um, trying to climb up to heaven on our own versus the truth that the Lord comes down to us. So I hope you enjoy this conversation with Adam uh, and Bethany. If you have thoughts and comments, please please leave that in the, in the notes below. And also, you know, there's a lot of conversation about deplatforming. It could happen. I mean, we're kind of at, we're here by YouTube's good graces. And if they decide that they don't like to hear what we're saying, then it's gone. So the best way to stay in touch is through the email list, uh, Wednesday Whatnot. So if you go to wolfmuller.co, hit the Wednesday Whatnot button and sign up for that. That keeps us in touch. So even if something bad happens here, uh, we can still get a hold of each other uh, via email and so forth. So uh, I'd encourage you to do that. And here's the conversation. Thanks. God's peace be with you. We're here at St. Paul Lutheran Church sitting down with Pastor Brian Wolfmuller and we think this place is amazing. The instant we walked in, I could just tell it was a special place. Like it 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 seems to like speak to you and it seems to like be like you're entering into somewhere special. Can you like explain some of the things that we're seeing here? Yeah, it's great. What the so there's a reason we call the the place in the church the sanctuary, the holy place. It's not because um, one place is any holier than any other place, but we know that God's word is what makes a place holy. So, so this is a place set apart for the word of God. We call it the sanctuary in that way. But it's not only set apart for the word of God, but with the word of God. So the, the fathers and, and mothers of the church here built this space to, to preach, which is really great as the preacher here because it's always like I've got backup. So like even if I'm bumbling in the pulpit, then you know the windows are preaching Christ, the beginning and the end, and there's the, the martyrs and the, the humiliation and the glorification of Christ. And we have the baptismal font right in the middle, and that reminds us of how God adopts us as his children, and he puts his name on us, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we have the altar. Now, we probably can't see, so right behind me is the lectern where God's word is read, and behind you guys is the pulpit where God's word is preached. And then straight in the back is the altar where we celebrate the Lord's Supper. One of the unique things about the Lutheran Church, well, you know, people normally talk about the church this way, like you have the Roman Catholic Church and the, maybe like the Episcopalian Church, they're the sacramental churches. They've got the Lord's Supper and the liturgy and all this stuff. And then you have like the Protestant churches, like the Baptist Church and the Methodist Church and the Baptist Church, and they're the preaching churches. So they emphasize the preaching in God's word. But I think one of the unique things about the Lutheran Church is that it's, it's both. We have, so we have the preaching of God's word that's read and preached and everything here is about God's word, sola scriptura. We also have the sacraments, the, the baptism and the gift of the Lord's body and blood in the Lord's Supper. We, we say that when Jesus says, this is my body and this is my blood, that's really what it is. So we have both in their fullness. So I, 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 you know, I know we, we all came from churches that weren't Lutheran in, in the background and, and have come to the Lutheran church. That's one of the great gifts of the Lutheran church is it has this full and rich historical and biblical heritage that it brings. And so I think this building is a, is a preaching of that. In fact, it's even in the shape of the cross, so it goes back and this way and to the side. So if you look from the top, it looks like a cross. And like what Paul says, we preach Christ crucified. So everything is about Jesus on the cross and what he's done for us. The whole church and every brick and, and rock, like what Jesus says when he's coming into Jerusalem and the Pharisees are like, hey, silence those kids. They're preaching, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And Jesus says, if they weren't quiet, then the rocks would cry out. Mm -hmm. And it's like the designers of this church and Christians are like, let's make the rocks cry out. 
Hosanna in the name, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So the whole building preaches that. So oh, cool. I love it. It's so beautiful. I wish you guys could see everything from our perspective. And I wish we were here on Sunday, but Adam and I have been uh, Lutheran for over five years now. And I love how you're pointing out that, you know, the whole service is pointing to the word of God. And even if you, the pastor, like completely blew your sermon and didn't like really give us what we needed or needed to hear, you still get like the word of God just intertwined in the entire service. And we're singing it, we're hearing it, we're... It's just been such a gift for yeah. us. Like, and sometimes with kids now too, I'm like, I can only get so much of the service. Yeah. But there's always a snippet of something that I need to be heard. It's the, like the liturgy builds in this redundancy. So it's, we're gonna give you the forgiveness of sins, 10 times, so you're gonna get it. No matter what, your sins are forgiven. I mean, you cannot miss the mercy of God, the love of God in Christ. It's so great. And the liturgy of the church, a lot of churches don't have that old form of worship with the liturgy, with the hymns and all this different stuff. So I remember the first time as an adult, I came into the Lutheran church for the liturgy and I'm like, what's going on here? It's like, is it, are these follow guys? along. Yeah, yeah. yeah what's, and why is oh, that going? I remember my first time, I was like, what is this? It was just foreign to me, <laughs> yeah. so I didn't get it. And I think there was a bit of like Catholic church phobia in me. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that stemmed from because I never really, like, I don't know. I don't never admit, been to a Roman Catholic I hadn't church. been to yeah. one, so. Yeah. But um, now I've grown to immensely yeah. appreciate like the beauty of every aspect of the church service and just it's definitely a blessing in yeah, our life that's right uh, for me too i mean i love it one of the things to, so on sunday for the service i'll put on robes uh, a white robe the orb for the lord's supper or the black and the white robes if we don't have it and and i and i put on my stole you know that covers this and my cross and and uh Sometimes people say, well, what are, you, what are you doing? And I said, well, this is my church camouflage. <laughs> so when, when I'm dressed like the church is dressed, then I disappear into the background. So it's not about me. I mean, this is, has, has to be the point, right? It's not about me. It's not about the preacher. It's not about the personality of the pastor. It's not about the, it's not, you know, a, a lot of churches where you have the band and it's, and you have the, and it's like a concert and it's, you, you, it's about the emotions, you know, I got to feel, it's not about the feelings. Everything is in service to the Lord. So, so I'm here, I want to blend into the background like John the Baptist. I must decrease so that Christ can increase in all of our consciences and all of our hearts and minds, that Jesus is what's, the service is about Jesus. And, and so Jesus comes into the service. I mean, literally here. He's here. Whenever two or three are gathered in his name, he's in their midst. Jesus says, this is my body and this is my blood. It's his word, his body and blood. It's, he's here for us. And when he shows up, then he starts saving. When, wherever Jesus is, he's there to save. So Jesus comes and he comes to save us, to forgive our sins, to give us hope, to give us life, to, to, to heal and deliver us. So, so this is why he establishes his church. So I'll build my church, says Jesus, which I love that word my. It's not, you know, it's not our church, it's his church. I'll build my church and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. So, yeah. so, so here, here we, we are, are in that promise. And one question I have, just because you're so amazing at communicating, like, the definition of worship, so to say. Yes, a lot of times you ask people, what is worship? And it's well, us giving our praise to God. Uh, or, or our thanks to God. So the idea of worship that most people have is we're the actor and God is the recipient of worship. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the old phrase for worship in German is Gottesdienst, which means God's service. Mm -hmm. can, and it can mean the service of God. And in other words, we come to, the, to God's service to, to serve him, but also to be served by him. So there's this great little line written by a, a theologian named Philip Melanchthon, probably 1530, he writes this. He, he says, there's two kinds of worship. There's the worship of the law, which is where we come and stand before God and give him thanks and praise and even our obedience and our works. And then there's the worship of the gospel, which is where God gives himself to us. Mm -hmm. He gives us his promises, his life, his joy, his peace, his wisdom, so that, so that worship and, and, and he goes on to say, this is how God desires to be worshiped, that we receive from him his gifts by faith. Mm -hmm. 
so that, so that worship is first and primarily not us giving a praise to God, but God giving his promises to us. And then we respond in thanks and praise. So if people say, well, why should I go to church on Sunday? Why should I go there? The reason is because Jesus has gifts to give. And we go to re- chiefly to receive, chiefly to hear, chiefly to be blessed. That's that, so that worship is first God giving us his gifts. And then we, I mean, we start to respond. We try to respond. We, we kind of, but that, who cares? What, the main thing is that God gives his gifts to us. And I think of that, like, coming back to that, kind of what we were talking about earlier, is like, we need to be reminded. We're forgetful. We forget, like, God's promises, yes. his truth. So when we come to church, we're reminded. Mm-hmm. And right. that can, like, carry us forward in life and through those trials and temptations and pains that we face. That's right. Yeah, faith isn't natural. I mean, we don't naturally believe. So the Lord is always, he's always strengthening our faith, supporting our faith, correcting our faith, training our faith. So pr- pruning us. That's the, that's the picture yeah. that Jesus gives is he prunes. The things that don't bear fruit, he cl- cuts off. The things that do, he shapes. So the Lord is always shaping us and blessing us. And He's never leaving us or forsaking us. He's always with us. So his word is always, his word is always new in us. It's always, um, Psalm, Psalm 92 talks about how we're planted and we flourish in the house of the Lord. So we're like, we're like house plants in the temple. <laughs> so the, and the Lord is always taking care of us so that, we, so that we survive, that we make it through and he has us just how he wants us. So I, I, have a, I have a background in football, and so the, this illustration stuck out to me about touchdown moments oh. and about God's gifts being touchdown moments, and that happens here. Can, can you talk about, like, what those, those touchdown moments are? Yeah, absolutely. So it is, I mean, it's, we, we mentioned this earlier. That Jesus didn't just want to die and rise, but he wanted us to know about it. So he established his church. And it's not like someone, we're all sitting around saying, well, what should we do now? We should have a church where we preach. No, Jesus established the church. He, he, he said, whoever sins you forgive, they're forgiven. He said, preach the word in season and out of season. He says, go and baptize, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I've commanded. He said, this is my body, this is my blood, do this often in remembrance of me. So Jesus set these things in place, that we would gather together, to have the forgiveness of sins and to hear the, hear the word of God preached, to be baptized, to have the Lord's Supper. Those are put in place by Jesus so that he can come to us in those things and give us what he wants us to have. So Jesus is not absent. He's here. He's present. He sits on the throne to rule and reign everything for the sake of the church. So, I mean, the building, in some ways, the, this building is just a roof over the things that Jesus said that we ought to keep doing. So we're going to baptize, so we have a font, and we're going to baptize. Now, even if there was no font and no roof and no building, we would be baptizing. But, hey, we're going to keep baptizing. And Jesus says, here's my body and blood for the forgiveness of sins, so we're going to have the Lord's Supper. So we put an altar there to have the Lord's Supper. We put a roof over it. We put nice candles up to remind us this is where that happens. And the word is going to be preached. We're, We're going to preach the word everywhere, but every Sunday we're going to come here and you're going to hear the word of God preached so that the church is a... It's just saying, hey, here's the place set aside for the things that Jesus instituted to carry us through this dark world until the, until the resurrection. So between the ascension and the second coming of Jesus, so he ascends into heaven and he's coming back, there's a time now that we're living in. And what is that time marked by? It's marked by the things that Jesus said he wanted to keep doing. And this space is, is where he's doing them. Isn't that great? So it's not like we make these things up. Jesus said, this is what I want my people to do, and this is how I'm going to bless you. And so we say, God be praised. We'll, be, we'll come and be blessed. Awesome. I'm going to keep diving deeper. Uh, well, wait, oh, I'm... no, no, wait, wait. No, diving deeper. Like, wait, I want to go deeper. <laughs> so we talk about like the, the, those touchdown moments where And it's where God's Christ... touchdown more yeah. so than ours. Um. I think about Jesus' ministry when he was here on this earth and he worked through physical means. Mm-hmm. And you talk about how God's word mixed with physical means. You were touching on it. You were even talking about this. Like how, I want to, I want to talk more about that. Like how does he yeah, yeah. physically, he's still working that way, so, right? So there's a danger that, I don't, I don't, it just sticks to us. I don't know why it sticks to us, but we think that if something is physical or external, 
then that means it belongs to the realm of works. And therefore, it can't have anything to do with salvation because we know we're not saved by works. And so we just think, well, because if it's external, then it's got to be works and so it can't be salvation. So we see something like water, and we're like, water's external. Baptism is a guy moving water around, so it's got to be a work and it can't save. Or the Lord's Supper, there's bread and wine and there's a table and there's people coming there. It's external. And so because it's external, it's a work. So we just naturally think that way. But, but that's wrong. So Jesus is always working through means. I mean, even just basically the, the, the means of his own body and his blood that he shed on the cross. I mean, that's physical. It wasn't a, it wasn't a spiritual death that Jesus died. It was very real. So his own incarnation shows that he takes the stuff of this world and he, he connects his promises to them so that we can have them. So he did that with his own death and resurrection. And then he said, now this is how you're going to know where my church is. When I have water connected to the promise of my name, boom, there you have new birth, baptism. And where I have bread and wine connected to the promise, this is my body, this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, there you have my supper. So, so, so th these physical things are, God puts his promise to them so he can give them to them. And it's so nice for us because... If, if our whole spiritual life is just the inside of us, like the turmoil of our own emotions or inner life or whatever, then sometimes my faith is strong and sometimes it's weak. Sometimes I'm sure and sometimes I doubt. Sometimes I feel close to God. Sometimes I feel far from God. But, but what if I come here and, and I come and I hear the preaching and I, hear the, and I taste and eat and drink the body and blood of Jesus and I leave here and the turmoil is still there inside of me and the devil says, you think you're a Christian? Oh, look at all the bad stuff or whatever. And I said, I know I'm a Christian, not because of this, but because of this. Jesus just told me that he's giving me his body to eat and his blood to drink and the forgiveness of my sins. And I, and I ate it and I drank it. And so the promise of the gospel is as sure and as, as solid as the death of Jesus and the empty tomb and the bread and, and, and the wine and the body and the blood that I ate. It's that sure. So that, so that the Lord connects his promise to those physical means and he delivers them to us so that we don't have to live in this kind of sea of doubt and uncertainty, but we can, just, we can know. I know that I'm, I belong to God, not because of what I feel, but because I'm baptized. So there's this time when Luther was tempted by the devil. Martin Luther, the former Martin Luther. The devil's coming to say that oh, you're a sinner and everything. And he takes a knife and he, he carves on the table, I am baptized. I wonder what his wife thought about it. What are you doing to the table? The table. <laughs> I am baptized. I know, how, but how about that? So it doesn't matter. You know, I'm a sinner. I'm a doubter. My faith is strong and weak. I'm proud. I'm despairing. I'm all of these things, but I'm baptized, and that can't be changed. It's, it, it, it just establishes us so that these, these gifts that Jesus has put in place give us this assurance that he wants us to have so that we don't... Jesus doesn't want us to doubt if we're worthy if we're his, if we're saved, so he's given us these gifts. So I think it's so important because in the church today we think, ah, baptism will work, Lord's Supper will work, nothing to do with salvation. And we, we have, it removes that comfort and that assurance from us. So, so many Christians are trying to find the assurance of salvation inside themselves by their feelings or outside themselves by their good works. Or even beyond that, by um, kind of convinced, uh, what's the... Intellectualism like, or... Yeah. Uh, yeah, or by their reason. Their so reasoning, reasoning. Yes. yeah. So their reason or their works or their emotions. Moralism, good works, the ladder of good works. Uh, uh, mysticism, the ladder of emotions. Mm -hmm. Or rationalism, the ladder of reason. We're trying to climb up to heaven through these three ladders, but know that God comes down to us in the means of grace and just gives us this assurance. So that my confidence, it's not in myself, or my works, or my thoughts, or my anythings, it's in Christ and his gifts. That, so, so it's so nice. I mean, it's so wonderful. And how, I, I, it's just to give that to the church, because so many people are looking for the assurance of salvation where God hasn't put assurance. But he's put assurance in your baptism. And he's put assurance in the preaching of the word, in the forgiveness of sins, in the, in the Lord's Supper. He's put assurance there for us. It's just there for the taking. So, to, to, so, so we, 
We have it every week, all the time. This con- uh, the, the husband and wife are sharing each other of their love for one another. This is how God does it. He, this is how he assures us of his love for us. Awesome. And, it, and, and we didn't make it up. Jesus said, this is what I want you guys to do. <laughs> yeah, so, so chill. Nice. It's great. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for sharing no. about church, theology, and uh, it's just such a comfort and such a joy to be, be here and talk. So, yeah. Thanks. We shall we shall have more conversations in the future. <laughs> Thanks. <Yeah. laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. That's two a second part. We have one, two, three, four, five more part. We t- I mean this is a two hour conversation. So there's more that's coming out, and I'll try to post those up in the weeks to come. But hope hopefully you, you enjoyed that. If you have thoughts or questions, please make note of them in the comments below. And uh, again, the Lord uh, peace be with you. If you didn't sign up at the beginning for Wednesday whatnot. Time to do that now. So wolfmuller.co slash Wednesday whatnot. We give away a theology book, mostly Luther books, every week so uh, or every month. So go and sign up for that as well. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks.